That's David Oblas. I'm Julian Version. This is NFC Now. Coming up and who, next. Who, who, who do we have next? Tell us who we have coming, next. Coming up next on the pod, man. Uh, and, and I believe he said this is his first ever pod appearance. So we're going to welcome him with, with a warm welcome. And we're going to make sure we say his name the right say way. Say his name. The right way. Shamel Badman Finley is joining us here on NFC Now. Shamel, my boy, it's been a minute. How you living, bro? Hey, man, I feel great. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm healthy. I feel accomplished for the year. Um, before we talk about the fights, man, let's talk about the pod, bro. Are you a little nervous about this experience right now, man? How, what's your emotions like? No, for real, I really am. Like, I, I, I worked out, um, getting nervous about the fights and all that. Now you would think that this would be small to me, but my heart was beating. I was like, oh shoot, I'm coming up. Hey man, I appreciate you, uh, for correcting them on my name. You know, <laughs> they've been butchering it for years and I've just been like, you know what? I let it go because I'm like, okay, one day I'm going to earn, you know, everybody saying it correctly. You know, one day it's going to be, it's, you, you, you're not going to be able to say it, you know, wrong. So I was like, I'll just earn it. Fine. Bro, I'm telling you, I'll never forget that time at District Atlanta where we were in the back, in that back room, and I was interviewing you, and you had your whole contingency squad, bro. You had the whole hood back there. Oh, and yeah. I said, Shamel, and I swear it was your stepdad or your dad. Somebody yeah. was like, yo, it's Sha it's Shamel. It's Shamel. And I was like, I'm not going to forget that ever again, man. Oh, so yeah. respect to him, man. You're coming off a, a, of a huge victory this past weekend, man. With um, let me get this right. It was CCFC. What is that promotion? CFFC. CFFC. Yeah. What is that promotion? Um, Cage Fury Fighting Championship against uh, Santo Cur Curatolo. Curatolo, yeah. You got the TKO finish um in round two, man. He waved the white flag, man. Um, what were your thoughts about that fight, man? Um, I enjoyed myself, man. It was one of those times, I think, uh, maybe like two fights ago, I started getting this feeling and this basically what I've been working on all year. Just, this was my, the, the point of the activity, you know, being so active this year was getting rid of those, uh, jitters, you know, dimming those lights, you know, people freeze under the bright lights. And I think, um, my whole point this year was kind of taking that out of the equation being able to go out there, stay calm, make uh, make deliberate choices and adjust to whatever was going on out in the fight. And I feel like I did that pretty well, man. I think we, we stuck to our game plan. We got him tired. We heard him. And then, you know, we didn't answer. I've told you numerous times in the past, and this is going on for years now, that you were the uh, top 125-pound uh, fighter in the state of Georgia. Mm. I, I think you proved that as an amateur. I think you've proved that fights ago as a pro, uh, if not even the best in the Southeast right now. Um, you know, we know you and another guy train at the same gym right now, but where do you see yourself on the big Southeast plan right now or, or even in the country? I mean, how high up do you see yourself right now? I, man, it's crazy hearing you say things like that. I mean, like you have said it to me before, uh -huh. like messages, and um, I think it's healthy that I still see myself in the same way. Like I would have came on here if you would have said Shamel or Shamal, I probably would have, you know. I'm not. I'm not even gonna say your name anymore. I'm not gonna yeah, try. Shah, I, 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 Shah yeah. Mel. Yeah, you know, like I, I just would have just maybe told you later or something. You know, it's just it's this thing. I, I still see myself the same way, and um, I think that's what's helping me. Kind of, um, it's always this. You know, nothing's gonna be given to you. It's got to be earned. So, I don't know, man. I see myself the same way. I just. Uh, I, it's but it's funny hearing you guys say or bring up certain things like hmm is that the narrative now like that's funny like that's crazy yeah yeah I gotta correct I mean I gotta ask David for just a follow up who are you referring to man you said him so and I guess I'll I'll, I'll I'll give a backup story there's no reason to because I'm friends with both of them um, mm -hmm. Shamel and Jamar Whitehead were heading toward each other years ago they were scheduled to fight as an amateur when we did the X3 Sports Foundation. Um, it was a show that uh, I had the entire NFC do for free years ago. Um, so everyone on staff got paid. I was the only one that basically worked for free. It was for the X3 Sports Foundation. And Shamel and Jamar were supposed to fight in the main event. 
Um, Jamar, unfortunately, didn't make weight. The fight was canceled. Shamel was as uh, professional as he could have been back then. And I think at that point in time, Shamel needed to fight Jamar to cement his legacy as being the top 125-pound fighter in the state of Georgia. It didn't happen that night or supposed to happen later as a pro. And I don't think – I don't think Shaw, I'm not going to say the rest of it. I don't think Shaw, 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 I don't think Shaw ever got the recognition he deserved because he never went through Jamar Whitehead. But I think now he has earned the recognition from fighting for CFFC, for fighting two or three times on Fight Pass now. It, it's not a fight uh, Shawmel needs anymore. It's it's not. And, and they train at the same gym now, ironically. But uh, Jamar's not on his track anymore. And, and that's no offense to Jamar. I'm friends with him. But Shaw Mel has uh, has earned what he has earned. Hey, uh, man, I think, yeah, I think you said it best. Um, but at the time, like I said, I think I keep my head down so much and I'm so focused on what I have going on that I, I never, if you never put it that way for me just now, I would have never thought like, oh, I have to go through this guy to cement anything. You know, I've never thought that I were um, – careers were that tightly linked so I guess that helped me just be able to when it didn't work out I just moved on I just kept going and we are where we are now so um and but in my mind I've always saw it this way it's like when you're lined up against me you matter and when you're not you don't and and I hate to say it from a promotional aspect I always wanted to see you versus Jamar I thought it would be a hell of a fight but now that you guys both train at ATT Lima I think you guys need to settle the beef, and I told you this last week. You guys are at the same gym. You guys now need to become friendly, help advance each other, and, and work together. And I know you guys don't talk at all. I know you guys aren't friends. You're not even friendly. There's nothing going on there. But in my opinion, you guys are now never going to fight. One of you guys needs to go to the other one, or Diego and Douglas need to bring you guys together and say, together, you guys can accomplish a lot more in the gym than you can apart from each other because the fight's never going to happen, in my opinion. Mm. When I first met you, Shamel, that was around the time where that fight was supposed to take place, man. And I interviewed you that night where you were supposed to fight Jamar um, um, Whitehead. Uh, there was, uh, again, there was a lot of animosity between the two of y'all, even after the fight that you had afterwards where your stepdad made sure I said your name the right way. You called him out that evening, man. How were you able to, like, move past that, man? And, like, what is it like when y'all train together? And, and, and then following up with that one, you left X3 Sports, and now you're at ATT Lima, to my knowledge now. Could you just explain all of that? I know I asked you three questions, man. But could you answer all those? All right, I'm following uh, yeah, man, how I moved past it, like, like I said, uh, it really is just that simple for me. It's like when you're, when you're lined up against me, when I, I actually, I was telling this to, uh, another, another teammate just yesterday. It's like when you have a guy and you have a contract and they're in front of you, man, you got their topology up on, on your, on your tabs, you might have their Instagram up, you know, you're looking at what they're saying, what they're doing, like for that amount of time you're you're damn near obsessed with this guy this is your opponent and you know he's the next step for you but man as soon as my fights are done that tab gets swiped away and i forget i as soon as my fights are done my search history cleared like i forget that person like you are no longer in front of me you know what i'm saying i walk that way and i'm only looking forward to now you're behind me so getting past it it's honestly there's no process for it because there's no thought when it comes to uh, getting past it for me, I just move forward. Um, uh, when we train together now, though, it's fine. I mean, when I when I first came or when I was first coming around and I wasn't officially with the gym yet, uh, there was a couple times where there were, uh, you know, just looks and whispering and whatever. But, uh, man, I've been around that guy enough, like, I will. I can say this now because it's so it's over and dead for me anyway. Um, there were times he would do those type of things, and I would antagonize him in the gym on purpose. <laughs> like I'd walk super close, or if he was lifting weights or some, I'd go ask to like ask whoever he was lifting with, like, "Hey, can I jump in on these reps?" Or just just stuff where I knew he would like walk away or not want to, you know, interact with me, like stuff like that. But now we don't even mess with each other, man. We just literally walk past like there's nothing in the room. 
Hey, except in the team photos, he does still Photoshop oh, you out of the team yeah, photos. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's when I find out. Yeah, that man, is, he is he's still on it for sure. I, I, uh, Again, ladies and know, gentlemen. Shh. Yeah, my bad, man. You out, brother. But yeah, no, that's when I found out. I, I never look for things when it comes to him, but he does come up uh, from time to time. And people send me like screenshots of him uh, scribbling me out of team photos and things like that. Interesting, because I've actually seen that before. I was always wondering <laughs> who was scribbled out. But yeah. um, again, ladies and gentlemen, Shamel Badman Finley joining uh, David Oblas and me, Julian Virgin, here on NFC Now. Shamel, you're five one and one as a professional now. Your first uh, ever professional bout came in the NFC, where you took a you took a defeat, then you followed mm -hmm. it up with a victory, and now you've been on a streak ever since, man. How are you able to bounce back from that first loss? Man. Um... Man, I heard Kamaru Usman. I think I heard him in an interview one time, and uh, I've, I guess those words really resonated with me. I think the uh, the way it feels to lose is it outweighs uh, the winning like tenfold. Like you can remember, and I think that's kind of in life. Like people have this way of like kind of sticking on to like negative emotions. Like you can feel and remember those things more clearly than like some of your highest highs. So like for me. Man, that loss, that hurt so bad. I can tell you all this stuff now. It's so crazy. So we had a party bus after. It was already booked. You know, I swore I was, you, you go in a fight, you, you think you're going to win. If you don't, you got an issue already. So anyway, we had a party bus, and I won't make the story too long in detail, but, man, when I say I got – can I curse on you? Yes, I do. I do, Julian doesn't. Hey, man, I got, I got, I got fucked up. But here's how like I got on there. It's after the fight. They're passing me um drinks, and I'm not saying no to anything. So I'm mixing, I, I, like shot after shot. We so we had the party bus for maybe like two hours. I remember the first thirty minutes max. Um, I woke up in different clothes. Um, I woke up in a hotel room, a nice hotel room out in out in Atlanta somewhere. Like in on like on one of the top floors had a view and everything, so I don't know who took care of me like that. But apparently they told me uh, I threw up everywhere in uh, in my homie's car. This is we we I have not confirmed this. I don't believe it, but they say I pissed myself. Um, and uh, yeah, man, it was just it was crazy. So that whole thing, uh, even after the fight, my eyes were hurting. I couldn't cry. And I think that's why, like, I don't know what that was about, but every time my eye would, eyes would start watering, it would it would hurt, and that, you know, led everybody to give me shots to, to dull the pain. But anyway, man, that shit was so memorable. And I think, you know, that was just day one of never again, you know? So what is next for you now? I mean, you've now won two or three fights on UFC Fight Pass. Has CFFC talked to you about what's next? Do you have anything with them, or, or what are you looking for next? I have spoke to a lot of people about what's next. It's crazy when you realize how many people can actually get in touch with you after certain things. But um, I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to or can talk about what's next. But I will say that I am not fighting again this year. Um, I have to say that because nobody believes me. They think I have a problem now at this point because um, I've said that at least twice. And I kept going. So anyway, I'm not fighting again this year. I'm going to rest, um, not relax, but just rest, heal up. You know, it's bulk season right now. It's cold outside. Time to get my little, time to put some weight on. And I'm, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to actually get better. Because, you know, I fought, I fought six times this year. So when you really do the math, it's like for every month that I wasn't fighting, I was training. You get what I'm saying? So, um how how much better did i really get in between fights you know how how where was i how much was i able to level up in between i would love to see how much i can uh, level up with more time in between the fight well, well shamel as you said that man i thought about when i interviewed you earlier this year man um at x3 mm. before your fight against Ramondo scott you told me that the plan was to be active man mm -hmm. your mother and i we sat there and we just talked about how you know, the plan was to be active, and now we're sitting here in October, man. You said you had six fights this year. 
I got to just tip my cap to you and say respect for you just putting in that work and being a man of your word. But I mean, it's also just a testament of like, yo, you said it, you meant it, and you, you achieved it. So if you don't want to fight the rest of the year, man, you definitely deserve to take some time off. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah. the At the beginning of this year, uh, I also heard something else that said, uh, it said something like, uh, it only takes a year to change your life. And I guess like those were the main two things that stuck with me, man. Just like the loss being, you know, me feeling that way more than any victory. And then it only takes a year to change your life. So once I started putting those things, you know, uh, as a constant in the back of my mind, it was easier for me to like, I made this year very dialed in, very selfish, very, um, you know, one track minded and tunnel visioned into this, into uh, where we are now. Indeed. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Sha Mel Badman Finley joining us here on NFC Now. Before, before, one of my final questions to you, man, is every time that I see you, I see your mom, and every time that I see your mama on, on socials, she's talking about you, man. Could you just talk about the importance of your mother? Oh, man, I love her so much. And she's going to be, she's going to, uh, she's definitely going to want to talk to you about, uh, Corrected them on my name, man. She's probably gonna be really happy about that. Uh, and she's one. Of, she's taught me like uh, this. Is why I mess with you so much, man. People that uh, stick up for you when you're not in the room. You know, you didn't even know I was here, and that was just something that came to your mind to do. So we appreciate uh, shit like that, you know. But yeah, it's important having her there, man. She she is literally a a uh, my hype man. <laughs> You would think she's going to come out there and be all timid. and da -da. Like, obviously, I feel like sometimes I'm more chill than her. She comes out there. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's just another person in front of me, man. She'll come straight up to me before we walk out, man. Fuck him up. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I got you, mom. The, the funny thing is I can usually tell whose parents are in the crowd and whose aren't. Like, before the fight, they come closer. They get their cell phone out. Yeah. They're making a ruckus. Um, so I think I've met her before the fights, and usually I try to hold them back, but I also say, look, I realize this is your son. You can come a little bit closer, but don't do this and that. So I think I've mm -hmm. talked in the past as well. Um, you've trained with both Jared Gooden at X3, possibly mm -hmm. at Team Lima, and you've trained with Doug Usher. That's a big fight Saturday night. Who are you taking, Doug Usher or Jared Gooden, and how? Mm, man, uh, that's a hard one, and it, it's actually come up a lot, obviously. Uh Training with, I, I think I trained with uh, Jared way more, obviously, because he was on my team at the time. But I will say it's a hard one. It, it depends on who shows up how. Uh, I will say, though, I feel Doug is uh, the more consistent of the two. And sometimes in this in this sport, you kind of get this recency bias. And I know, like, Doug didn't have a, you know, Doug got finished the last time he was out, but I think somebody brought it up earlier on the podcast. Like before that, he was going on a tear, and I think it was, it's just so consistent the way he fights and so efficient. And um, you know, when Jared is on, man, he looks like a world beater. Obviously, you know that's how he got called up to the big show. When he's on, he's on. But uh, if we're if I'm if I were a betting man and I'm betting on like consistency and who has the tools to get it done, I think they both have the tools to get it done. But when it comes to like a high level fight, it's like who's gonna be more consistent and who's going to stick to their game plan and make less mistakes. I'm probably leaning towards Doug in that area. But young, explosive, killer instincts, Jerry. I got two more for you, man. Do you have a favorite fighter on the NFC roster right now? On the NFC roster? Jamar Whitehead? Uh, he's a good one. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But I don't know on the NFC I don't. I don't not. I do not know on the NFC roster, man. Oh, I like, uh, man, shout out uh, Chris, Chris Lynn. Uh, who else? There's a couple guys uh, on the on the roster, man, that are – that are coming up looking good, and I trained with a couple of them. I, I'm just shouting him out. He just, I guess that'll, that can answer that because he popped into my head first. But no, nah, there are a couple guys I trained with a couple of them. But I don't really want to say I have a favorite, man. They're all doing their thing. How important has the NFC been to your career and you just getting to other promotions? Man, the NFC, NFC is, uh, has been great to me. Uh, we had, like I said, I've always felt, even before I was, 
having these types of conversations and before I do you guys, before I do you, um, uh, Oblast, like before I was able to have, have these one-on-one -on -one conversations with you guys, um, I always felt like, you know, it's okay if they don't know you, it's okay if they don't, you know, it's a process, you have to earn that. And so like, I feel as soon as I did, you know, some of the necessary things, to be in this position, it was it was it was all love. So um, NFC has been great to me. I don't know if y'all y'all talked about it. Uh, ooh, I don't know if y'all. I still about got you. It, uh, but um, yeah, I brought it up to you like a week ago talking to Coach Brett at uh, Compound Wrestling. Man, yeah. the, the the things you things you've done. Georgia's MMA community and fight community period, man. I think more people need to need to know and learn about that, that and it'll bring a bigger appreciation to to you and, and what NFC has going on. Yeah, because I don't talk too much about my resume. I think like you, I'll let it speak for myself, but it was cool to hear that uh Cliff Fretwell had told you the history of Dave Oblis and uh, how MMA wasn't even legal in Georgia, except for one organization. I had to go to the Georgia State uh, Capitol and speak before the House and legislature a couple of times to uh, get it pushed to where other organizations could even promote in the state of Georgia. Yeah. So that was cool. Uh, and I gave Cliff Fretwell a text that day to uh, tell him thank you for letting uh, telling that story to you and probably other people as well. So it was cool yeah. to see that. So, yeah. Um, man. But, I do want to say, because uh, I, I never really got to answer it, I forgot when he asked me. He asked me about X3 and my uh, change over to uh, AT. Hey, man. <laughs> so nice of you to join it. I'm just fine. <laughs> nah, but um, uh, X3, man. Shout out to X3, man. It's no, uh, there, there are no hard feelings towards X3. I love all those guys and uh, every coach and every um training partner that I, I i met walking through those doors man they gave me my first chance and uh, taught me a whole bunch of things and um so you know my move to att had nothing to do with x3 and more to do with me and um i love it over at att man from the first time uh all year i finally had a coach from att come with me to a fight because you know all year really i've just been training basically training by myself, training with some of the old X3 uh, teammates, but it's really been my um, wrestling partner from high school. So literally we just been squeaking these wins out, kind of still like, you know, training out the garage in a way, in a sense, but nah, ATT, man, I love those guys. I love the coaching over there. Uh, uh, Diego, Douglas, uh, Cody, Treshawn, all these like high level guys, man, giving me, uh, advice and giving me the chance to just you know work and uh believing in me coach brantley that's who came with me man he's amazing he's amazing and um yeah i think we're gonna do great things together over at uh, apt lima coach brantley will definitely be on the nfc now pod here soon man i've been talking to him man, and i think it's so dope the way that fighters like yourself speak so highly of him and him just taking that trip down there with you outside of his family i know he has two boys and a wife but him just taking his time to be in everybody's corner man especially yourself as you gained another victory via tko in the second round man for cffc this past and yo Chanel, just you know we rooting for you bro every day of the week man we appreciate you for just always just putting on for the nfc man putting on for you and putting on for your family man so make sure when you see your mama you tell her i said hello thank you for joining us this evening and i'm happy that we was able to have your first ever podcast Correct. with us man thank you thank you you know it, bro. again ladies and gentlemen shamel bodman finley